What's going on, everybody? I hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to be talking about predicting market direction before it happens. Now, in order to fully understand this, we first need to understand a big delusion when it comes down to the trading space that unfortunately, most of us slip into at one time or another. Now, what am I talking about? Well, the study of technical analysis is a great, great tool because it helps us to identify just simple patterns that repeat themselves throughout the past because humans are in control of the market. Humans have patterns of behavior, whether it's at a micro level, so on an individual level, so one human being, you know, we as individuals have patterns. And on a macro scale where the mass, like cultures and cultural uh, behavioral tendencies it's the same sort of thing. It extrapolates out. You can identify patterns in the small. You can identify patterns in the large. Now, this is why technicals are great because humans are terrible at predicting the future. Now, I've referenced in previous videos many, many um, studies and examples of why humans are so bad at predicting the future, even though we often think that we're really, really good. Um, and so when we learn technicals, we get really proficient after a while, we start understanding things and understanding at least our way of looking at things. And we start to kid ourselves into thinking, oh, I'm starting to understand this now. Therefore, when I predict something is going to happen, it should happen. Or it should happen even like most of the time. When in fact, most of the time, you have no idea what is really going on here. Because I hate to break it to you, but price isn't moving because of some magic level. It's not moving just because of an order block or of this level or that level. It's just not how it works. It's really not that simple, to be honest with you, if you really look at all of the elements that go into trading. Now, is this a cause for us to panic and be like, oh, you know, none of this is possible? No, of course not. The difference is in how we execute on our rules, whatever those rules may be. Because when you think to yourself, I know what's going to happen because i'm a i'm really good at technicals that is completely wrong because you don't know doesn't matter whether you have been doing this for multiple decades doesn't matter if you spent your whole life doing it you still don't know you just don't because there are so many variables you've got all of the actual economic data and the forecast of that data then on top of that you've got the people's different opinions and predictions about what is going to happen with the economic side of things you've got all of the people with their own technical reasoning and all of the different disagreements and the collaborations and the partnerships and the inter economic climates and political situations you just can't track all of it it's too much too much information for any of us to physically track now this is why technicals are good because it means we can simply detach from that and focus on, okay, are we letting the same patterns of the past play out into the future again? And how well can we get at that skill? But, okay, and this is key. In order to do that, we just need to execute on our rules whenever the rules are met. We don't have the decision making in, uh, in place to be like, oh, this looks good. This doesn't look good. Um, and so therefore, I'm going to take it or I'm not going to take it. In the beginning, you must focus on just looking at, okay, can I follow my rules consistently, uh, consistently, regardless of the outcome, and then make decisions once I've got enough data? I'm talking at least 20 trades in most scenarios. There are exceptions to the rule, but there are always exceptions to the rule. Okay, so at least 20 trades, you can then look at it and be like, okay, well, you know, this this isn't looking good or this is looking good. But unfortunately for most of us, we take three losses in a row, four losses in a row, and it feels like the whole world is caving in and we switch something up or we, uh, you know, we change strategy completely. And that's just not really an effective method. Okay. And so the golden rule in the beginning is stick to the rules no matter what. But this is really important because most of us spend so much time in the beginning learning from YouTube videos and doing all this sort of stuff. And everyone's got their own little magic branded method and magic method of, oh, you know, follow this level and this will work well. Or, you know, this is the direction level and this is what the banks are doing. And people will endlessly come up with so many different things. But at the end of the day, it is all a delusion into thinking that you are ever going to be in a position where you know for certain what is going to happen. I don't care what method you trade, you do not know that you never ever know. Okay, and so how can we translate that back into what we're doing? Well, it means that we just all the pressure is taken off. We just need to find rules that work, stick to those rules and continuously execute on them. It's only then after a long time of doing that, and I'd say at least if you've been consistent for six months with a particular set of rules, after that point, then maybe you can add a layer of discretion and be like, okay, cool. Well, you know, uh, this looks good or this doesn't look bad. You know, my rules have just been met, but this looks good. This doesn't look good. Maybe you can add that. But 
if you do that in the beginning, you're going to let emotions dictate what you're doing and you're not going to be using actual logic and just emotions, which isn't good. And so translating that into an actual practical example, and we'll talk about the strategic uh, stuff in just a second, okay? So if we have a trend following trader, typically the whole idea is that we want to be getting involved on the pullbacks, okay? We're assuming that the trend is going to continue, okay? Very, very simple. Now, the other condition of the market is just going to be price moving sideways. Now, this doesn't mean that it has to be moving exactly sideways. It could be slightly slanting up or slightly slanting down. The truth is it doesn't really matter, okay? The point is, is that we have up and down markets and sideways markets and different variations in between. But typically, these are going to be the, the two uh, environments. Now, where do most trend following traders lose most of their money? Well, they lose most of their money during consolidations because the whole edge of a trend following strategy is we're assuming the trend will continue. And what does the trend not do during consolidations? It doesn't continue. But there is something that we can do. Because if we look at price moving in this direction, for example, we know that price cannot move in straight lines forever, and it can't trend forever, and it can't consolidate forever. And so based on that, where is the best place that we can use to minimize those losses wherever possible? Okay, if we understand that most losses come from consolidations, then we want to be missing out as much of this as possible. How do we do that? Simple. When is a consolidation most likely to start? After a long trend. Okay, when is a trend most likely to start? after a long consolidation or a consolidation. Now, we don't know, and this is again, bring it back to the point in the beginning about having a delusion about what works and what doesn't and our ability to predict the future. Um, we don't know, you know, whether the consolidation is gonna finish here or it's gonna go on for a bit longer and then go down or then go up. We just do not know. We may have our own opinions and our own ideas, but I guarantee you that you can find 10 people with completely different opinions within five minutes of being online at looking at the exact same thing, looking at the same information. And so if that's true, is it that one person's wrong and one person's right? No, not necessarily. Because if you follow most of those rules out to a large enough sample size, you will find that assuming that they are relatively decent strategies, they will probably all work in their own way. And this is why people get it so wrong. They have a losing day. They look over at someone else who's had a winning day. They think, oh, they had a winning day. Maybe they know something that I don't. Let me move over here. Let me follow them. Let me, you know, worship them or whatever it is. But that's not the answer because they will have losing days as well. And then you experience losing days using their strategy. And then you're like, oh, this doesn't work. And you move to something else. That is wrong. If you do that, you're wasting your time and you should give up or you should stop doing it. Simple as that. And that may sound a little harsh, but at the end of the day, that is the world that we're dealing with. Okay. And so um, here... How can we then leverage this to our advantage? Well, typically the highest probability for a trend would be if we had some sort of way to predict where it was gonna start. Now, newsflash, we don't have a way of predicting that. We have ways of estimating it. There's a big difference between predicting and estimating. And that is the key difference with technicals. Now on the flip side here, we wanna avoid the beginning of a consolidation as much as possible because it's just a way to, for us to help filter out losses. So how do we do that? Well, if we know that trends can't go on forever, if we've seen a trend that is fairly overextended, okay? And then, you know, it's giving us some kind of choppy behavior, or maybe it's just overextended and that's it. And I'll show you some methods to do this in just a second. Then in this scenario, assuming the trend is gonna continue in the same way that it, excuse me, has done, then that's not really gonna be the most feasible thing. Because what's most likely is it to enter a new phase, i.e. consolidation. Now, the same is true for consolidation. When is the best time to start trading in consolidation? Well, after it's clearly a consolidation, it's going to be a good time to start. Because regardless of whether the consolidation continues, you know, all the way over here, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that you would have filtered out this. And this is our job as traders, guys. It's to manage risk. It's not to be the next market wizard that they're going to write books about and do all this other sort of stuff. Because... There are going to be so many other people with so much more leverage in terms of multiple people working with them at a company that are all trying to do the same thing. And all of them have been struggling for multiple, multiple decades. You as a solo individual are not going to be the next world renowned magic, you know, 360, you know, king emperor trader. It's just not going to happen. Okay. And so when we understand that, it means that the pressure is taken off and we can just focus on making some money and being consistent with what we're doing, which is actually a much easier task than trying to be the next um, king of the markets, okay? And so here, when we have 
clearly seen that a consolidation has been established. And there's many ways to do this. You can literally just have a simple method, like two touches on the top and bottom. Then we have filtered out trading in this area and we can start trading here regardless of whether we start seeing buy signals we start buying and it stops us out we see another one then it stops us out we see another one it stops us out eventually when we do get those signals we're going to get a signal most of the time um, as to when the trend is going to change and then because we have been actively trading within here when it does finally happen we're going to be involved because we weren't emotionally attached to the results and we weren't looking at other people on social media going, oh, I've just had three losing trades in a row. Therefore, my strategy sucks. Therefore, I'm doing something wrong. And then you go and switch to something else. You stay consistent. You understand the principles behind the edge that you were trading. And when something does happen, you are there to take advantage of it. Now, this is just one small example of the trend following method of trading and all the various different approaches that people use to do that. Okay. And so... There are so many ways of doing this, but this is a simple way to look at things. It's a simple way to just manage that risk accordingly. Now, bring it back to the main topic of this video, talking about, um, didn't mean to do that, talking about predicting market direction. There's tons of different ways to do this, guys, arguably an infinite amount. One of the easiest ways to do it is just to look at candle structure um, or using moving averages on a daily, but not any moving averages moving averages that correspond with the structural aspect that we are adding into price. So let me show you what I mean by this. Well, typically when we look at candles, okay, most people just see them as candles in terms of the way that they've been taught. But I want you to just apply the laws of market structure to candle highs and lows instead of structural highs and lows. What do I mean by that? When we get a close above a candle, that is going to be above the previous candle to be specific, that is going to be indicative that something is beginning to shift. Okay. So for example, we are going down, 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 down. And then when we start going up, what do we do before that? We have a bullish break of the uh, close below the previous daily candle high. Okay. And then we continue going up. Now with market structure, remember what we are typically doing when we are going up, we are monitoring the lows. Why? Because the lows, when one of those breaks, that's the first indication that we may be beginning to do this. Okay. Now, of course, there's lots of little specifics within here, but this is just the easiest way to illustrate it. Um, and so when we do this, we're normally using swing points, which is structural highs and lows. However, with this, we're just applying the exact same principles to candle highs and lows. Okay. And so when we're going up, what are we going to be monitoring? We're going to be monitoring the lows created because these are all, in essence, higher lows okay and then we break down here then we start going down bearish 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 and then we break back bullish over here okay very very simple approach now regardless of whether we're looking at this and oh we're we in a consolidation right now are we, are we in this are we in that it doesn't matter all that much because you are always going to get things wrong you are always going to predict things incorrectly and that is why we manage risk that is the whole point of trading when people say things like oh risk management is the most important thing i remember when i used to learn um uh, about all this sort of stuff i was like oh yeah well obviously it is but i didn't really understand what that meant embodied and imprinted into the idea that risk management is key is the very idea that you will never be able to predict with um 100% accuracy what is going to happen and therefore expect to be wrong it's all written into this it's just been slightly warped in the way that it's often taught to people because people are just obsessed with strategy in the same way that people are in any industry you know and I give this example all the time but what most people are trying to do with trading and pretty much any industry out there is they are trying to you know if you imagine you're terrible at tennis they are trying to go to the world's best tennis shop, buy the world's best tennis racket, and they think that that is going to be the thing that suddenly makes them capable of competing at a professional level just because they've got a really good tennis racket. And as you know, that's obviously something that doesn't work. You know, it's no secret what the best strategies um, in the world are in various industries. For example, if I wanted to know what Cristiano Ronaldo's, you know, exercise routine was, his diet routine, what drills he did, um, or, you know, Michael Jordan or whoever it is, whoever, you know, just think of a famous athlete that you like. Everyone wants the fame and fortune that comes with that. Most people do anyway. Um, and so, and yet, despite how many people want that, it's not hard to find out what their strategy is, what it took to get there. It's probably very, very easy. You know, they work out, you know, let's just say four, five, six hours a day. They do this, they eat this. They've done it consistently for a huge, huge, huge amount of time. And so if it's so easy to understand the strategy, you must understand the strategy is not where you're going to find the answers. It's just not. 
And so when we understand that, we can begin to actually make proper decisions. We can begin to make informed decisions about what is most likely to happen. Okay. And we can focus on the areas that are important, such as the identity. Are you the person capable of executing on the strategy? Because that is the limiting factor between the two. But anyway, let's get back to the uh, strategic stuff here. So we break above right here, above that previous candle high. We are remaining bullish. This remains the low until we break past the new high. We can see that we kind of form a consolidation around here in the meantime until we break out with this candle right here. We then follow the lows. We fail to break past this high. Okay, then we break below right here. Now, of course, you could have extended this out here and waited for this to break because that is technically the higher low. However, another way of doing it is what I've done right here. We're just literally monitoring whether we are breaking above or below the previous candles high or low. Same thing is true over here. If we'd have adopted this a similar approach, we could have done this right here where we closed below the previous candle low. The next day kind of comes up a little bit, comes back down, then wicks down to the next day then we eventually end up going bullish. So there's a few different ways of doing it. Which one do I think is best? Honestly, they work well in their own respects and they both have pros and cons. So honestly, it's up to you which one you pick. It's not that one is right, one is uh, wrong. They're both going to have losses. They're both going to have series of losses as any strategy will. So it's just whatever you find easiest to pick. I think the easiest one to explain is just focusing purely on the current candle in relationship to the previous candle. And so... Uh, or at least the the last two candles, because then you have the close information. Um, but anyway, so we go down here, we continue breaking down past the candle lows, which means we are bearish. Then we break past this candle high right here. This becomes the higher low, like this, like this. Now, this may either be really, really obvious to you, or maybe really, really complicated to you, and I completely understand. Now, I also mentioned that um, a moving average is something that can be used here. So this is not the right setting here. Let's just go to the current chart. <clears throat> so what we are doing here to find these settings, and I'm not referencing any particular setting from my head, I'm using, um, essentially I'm eyeballing it to begin with to find those initial settings. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm not trying to base a strategy off an indicator. I'm trying to get an indicator to do the job of what I was just describing for me. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, every single point where we've changed direction. So we change direction here. We change direction here. We change direction here. Um, changed it here. At these points, I want the moving averages to cross at these points, okay? So a simple way to do it, instead of trying to go lower, because you can see I'm already on 10 and 20 on the daily chart here, I can begin to go down the time frame. So this will snap the moving averages to a lower time frame, which will make them a little bit more aggressive, okay? So if we look at this here, okay, cool. So right here, immediately this looks a little bit better, actually, okay? Because we can see right here, look what happens. We've crossed right here, we've crossed right here, We've crossed right here. We've crossed, we've actually crossed in here where we said we did as well. And we've also crossed back bullish here as well. We've crossed here, we've crossed here, uh, et cetera. Now, this is a much simpler alternative. And people often, especially in the SMC space, they'll be like, oh, indicators are terrible. They can't work. You're an idiot. Okay. That's the, the bottom line. And, oh, you know, I'm sure people are like, oh, no, you can't say that. Like, at the end of the day, you're not an idiot because you are stupid. You're just an idiot because you've been misinformed. Like indicators are just tools. They're taking in all of these same pieces of price information that you're getting on a candlestick chart. It all comes down to preference. And in my opinion, when you have an indicator that is just taking away the mental capacity of doing a job that is uh, that you've already established to work in price as we did here, um, then that is just something that is going to make your life easier and is something that should be good, okay? And, uh, you know, I, again, with the whole idiot thing, like, it's not that you're an idiot. It's just people really aren't taught this stuff. Like, you're just filled with so many lies and rubbish from a load of other idiots online who are just probably misinformed themselves. You know, and there's things that I'm probably misinformed with as well, and that's fine. That's part of the learning process. Um but for me, this is what I currently believe to be true. And I've believed this for quite some time. And I don't know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. That's completely your decision. So this would be a very, very simple way to predict the market direction. Now, is this going to give you 100% accuracy? No. 
Is it going to filter out some of the mistakes that the candle method uses? Yes, absolutely. Is it also going to cause some more issues at times? Yes, probably. So how can we then take this directional information and apply it down? Well, if we understand that these settings are good, it means that we don't really need to use the daily, assuming we were just using the daily for direction. If we were using it for levels as well, we would still need it. But typically, you know, let's just imagine that the, the direction is done. Then it means that day to day, day in, day out, we already have our direction sorted. And our only job is to establish kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of the video. Are we overextended in one direction? What's most likely to happen? Now, in order to answer this properly, you need to have an idea about what kind of session you trade and what the tendency of that session is. I find that for beginners, New York session is probably the easiest to trade because London can be a little bit all over the place at times and often it will have the false move of the day. So New York tends to be a really, really nice time. Um, and basically what we're looking for is we're just looking for a relative discount within an overall range. And the question is, oh, well, how do you mark out a relative range? What are we looking for? But all we're really looking for is we're looking for rejection at key levels. That's it. Regardless of whether you mark out an order block or a retest level or some high volume node or whatever it is, it was different ways of doing the same thing. Ultimately, when we are trading anything in a trend or in an environment, okay, all we're trying to do is get involved in the pullback. That's it. Okay. And so because of that, that means that when we go ahead and do this, all we're doing is identifying, okay, well, where is that discounted area or where is a very solid level that we could be potentially looking at? So again, during New York, we have this nice little turnaround point here. We had that same level reacting the previous day. As we go into that next day, let's see what we get. So in New York, this would be an example of where we're very overextended. Okay, we're very overextended visually. Is there a way to, you know, show you exactly what overextension looks like? Yeah, there are tools that you can use. But to be honest with you, a lot of the time you can just see it. That is a very aggressive move up. Price doesn't move like this for extended periods of time, especially not in the FX space. Okay, um, but in most markets anyway, this is the same. And so as we continue to move down, then maybe within here, but that was probably towards the end of the day, I wouldn't have really been that interested. But all the directional work is done. Now, there will be examples of this where it doesn't work, like where we are right now, maybe we're crossing over to be bearish and this all looks different and then it crosses bearish and then bullish straight away. That is fine. That is natural. That happens. That is what I'm talking about in terms of letting things go, letting things happen as they go instead of trying to overcomplicate everything and make it all, you know, unnecessarily uh, difficult. Okay. And so all we would really need to do is have a method to identify that. That's it. Just coming back, testing key levels during particular times of day once we've established direction. It's probably one of the easiest ways to do things, guys. It's by far um, from the easiest way or the only way. There are millions of ways to do it. Um, but this is just one of those ways. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, I know that I can be a little bit harsh sometimes talking about the realities of this, but it's only because I've made every single mistake that I talk about in this video um, a million times over. Um, and so when I use terms like idiot, you know, maybe it wasn't the, the best term to use. What I really mean is I was the idiot. These are all the mistakes that I made. I'm, I've been a complete moron millions of times over in this space. And so please do not feel bad. Do not feel discouraged. This is not your fault. This is the fault of an uneducated and misinformed industry. Um, and my goal is just to make things simpler for you. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about any of this stuff, then I do recommend checking out the links in the description. If not, that's completely fine. I'd recommend checking out the psychology playlist on the channel because that is where most people get things so very, very wrong. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.